Now let's now go to retired police colonel Ruina Garma when she sat when she claimed that a uh, former president Duterte ordered the police to actually do or mimic the Davao model that system of rewarding police officers to kill drug suspects okay now when you were commission on human rights chair you were already investigating this yes yeah what yes. when you heard her testify you said it was perfect you used that word let's talk about that why did you say it was a perfect testimony i, I i'm not really saying um when i say perfect testimony in one sense it is it was because it also again validated what we've been saying all along that these uh, drug war killings in it started in 2016 was just a replication a continuation on a national level of the dds killings which we investigated in 2009 and even the reward system it came out already from the uh, affidavits of uh, of of uh, uh, Arturo Lascañas and of Edgar Matobato. Kasi, and then, yung sinasabi ngayon ni uh, Colonel Garma, former Colonel Garma, that uh, a sort of a special task force yeah. uh, was yeah. created. Na, you know, yung, and yung system of the financing of these operations, the financing of every kill uh, yeah. was made. Again, nasabi na rin yung dati nila Mr. Lascañas na sila mm -hmm. Uh, sila yung mga police, sila yung mga right hand non si uh, Lascañas and si Sunny Benaventura. Yeah. Under the DDS uh, machinery, sila yung right hand. Sila yung linagay sila dun sa what was called as the Hinos Crime Section of the Davao City Police Office. Sila yung mga linagay dun. And, and their main task is really summary killings of suspects. And, uh, and 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 may uh, Mr. Lascani has confirmed that there was a payment for every kill. So it, this, the, the drug war killings are indeed a replication. It was indeed, uh, it, they, it actually used the Davao model. So mm -hmm. another validation of what we've been saying all along. The only difference now, as I can see it, uh, Karen, is that nung iniimbestigahan namin yung DDS, uh, and even nung uh, sinimulan ko rin yung investigation in the Senate for the drug war killings before I was ousted as the Senate committee chair, I, uh, the name of, of um, I don't remember that the name of the Senator Bongo cropped up. Now sa DDS, exactly. wala, kaming, wala kaming narinig tungkol dyan. The, I think the simple explanation there was because Sunny Beneventura and Arturo Lascañas were reporting directly to uh, Mr. Duterte, to then Mayor Duterte. Ngayon, sa, drug, sa national drug war, drug war killings, you know, it cannot be expected that each and every kill, each and every operations will be cleared personally with uh, then President Duterte. Unlike yung nasa DDS, Ang, 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 ang pakiwari namin is that nakiklear sa kanya because, you know, it's a smaller territory. It's a smaller group. You know, it's a smaller jurisdiction. Unlike in the national scale. So it was yeah. enough that there was a core group, a special task force reporting or coursing through directly uh, Senator Bato, then the special assistant to the president. These are all very credible stories kasi nandiyan na yan eh. Ngayon lang nagkakatugma-tugma. Ngayon, no. you know, all of this, uh, pieces of information, but forming now a, a, yeah. a big circle of the whole thing. Oh, So in the hearing, Garma said there was even an assembly that was held after Duterte won, or a month rather, a month after Duterte took office. So he was already declared the winner by then. There was an assembly held in May 2016, and that's when they created the task force. So what you believe is the reason Senator Bongo's name was mentioned, he was then former special assistant to the president, is eventually, because it's on a national scale, he would then be overseeing the task force. Is that it? Yes, yes. And, and um I, I think I saw some comments on this on SOC Med na 
hindi daw ka pinapiniwala yung sinasabi ni Colonel Garma kasi bakit naman daw hindi pang nangang daw presidente noon, president-elect pa lang, si, uh, si uh, Duterte ay nagplano na? Eh, well, precisely. Kasi nga, if you also go back, in, hindi ba the killing started as early as right after the elections? I mean, you can, you can research on that. The, that's why I had to move fast when I became a senator. Barely 13 days from my official assumption into office of senator and official assumption into office of President Duterte. I had to move fast because I saw already the trend, the pattern. Mm -hmm. They are again doing what they were doing in the vow. So it's not at all uh, incredible that they started early in planning this out. And we can even say that as early as uh, campaign period, Mr. Duterte, Mr. Duterte, as he is, na yung kanyang talagang no platform is just a single, you know, it was a single platform and that is addressing the drug problem. So, nagplano na kaagad. So, uh, uh, th that is very credible. That mm. is, that really can be validated and we can only hope, Karen, that uh, for, former NAPOCON commissioner, uh, Leonardo, would also speak up. And and also in, in, and on the part of Garma, yeah. Yes. No, what Go do ahead. you think? Can the former Napolcom chief? What do you think? Can he reveal? Well, about the formation of a special task force, and about the fact that he was, uh, you know, he was going directly to Senator Bongo, to now Senator Bongo, and arrange those uh, re that reward system, and 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 how it was done and how the reporting was done and and the, uh, the you know because the 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 bracketing of the uh, targets and of the amounts i think uh, colonel garma said that uh, she's not quite aware about the bracketing kung alin na mga 20,000 lang and up to 1 million of course we can we can say that the 1 million are the high value targets and 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 details of that can can be uh, hopefully can can be uh, revealed by uh, 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 Leonardo. Oh, all right. Now, um, you said that Garma's testimony uh, should be submitted to the ICC. Who will be doing that? Who can do that? Actually, anybody can submit the affidavit yeah. of, of uh, Colonel Garma. It can be the Quad Committee as a committee, but we are not sure whether at this point they intend to do that, or it could be the lawyers of the victims. It could be anyone, because in the ICC, uh, it, it's, it's, you call them the communications, you know, information. You provide information to the ICC. Mm. So, and because anyway, all of this would be subject to validation. And perhaps we can also say now that what Colonel Garma had revealed so far, I say so far because uh, you know I'm looking forward to more revelations from her, that um, what she revealed so far is quite helpful and useful through her ongoing investigation. They, they needed somebody, they needed something to directly link uh, Duterte through his guy, through his trusted aide, uh, Senator Bong Go. Um, okay, so do, do you believe that Senator Bongo should also be investigated by the ICC? Because the ICC probe involves five names and his name isn't there. Not yet. Yes. yes. Do you believe he should be included? Yes, he must be included. This is a very significant revelation from former Colonel Garma. Yeah, because the, the, the link, because... Uh, from all the information, any any investigator would really have that uh, conclusion that this is a state-sponsored thing, that it was induced uh, by by President Duterte. Um, he is behind all this. That is his whole plan. The Garma testimony just validated it. And the uh, participation of uh, Senator Bongo is quite essential, is quite material, is quite crucial also. So he must be investigated, exactly his role. And it would be good if there are other corroborative witnesses 
kay, kay uh, Colonel Garma. Kaya lang, yung tungkol naman kay Colonel Garma, Karen, I, I, um, ang ano ko lang is that maybe it's understandable that she's not yet saying everything. She's not yet telling us everything she knows. And it is understandable that uh, she is claiming lack of personal knowledge in some aspects of her testimony last Friday. Kasi bombshell na bombshell yung kanyang affidavit eh. Pero pagdating sa questioning, meron siyang mga wee with hold. Pagdating sa questioning, yung iba, she would say, I would not know, I have no personal knowledge because it was Leonardo. So, ang hindi lang niya ma-admit ngayon is that she could be really part of that special task force also. Possibly but with, oh, oh, possibly you on. Oh, oh. Yeah, I, I believe. Kasi she's also as close to Mr. Duterte as, uh, as uh, si Leonardo. If not directly to Mr. Duterte, also through Bongo. Uh, close to Mr. Duterte because bakit siya yung tinawagan at pinuntahan niya? That's part of her testimony. At siya yung pinuntahan niya at pinuntahan niya ng police. Siya yung... Correct. Yeah. So she must be so close. So she must she must have a, um, more, some level of, of participation have, yes. in the special task force. Okay. And, um, and not only that, from being a pol uh, po police colonel, she was actually even moved to the PCSO. Duterte gave her a post, I believe, was it two months before his retirement? But the point is he even moved her to another high level post. Yes, I, within the PNP, I think they know that how, how close she, she was with the Mr. Duterte, and that's why we could see that it was also difficult, if not painful, painful for her. Do you believe that's why she prince? was crying? That's why she was crying? The whole testimony, she was crying. And also because of her fear, for her security, I think. So that could be one, you know, in the sense of, you know, if you're close to somebody and then you spill the beans about that, about him, then there is a betrayal there some level of personal betrayal so it could be painful for anyone yeah so yeah. and 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 also she definitely she knows mr duterte how vindictive he could be so and but everybody's now waiting for what is the reaction of mr duterte he seems to be silent now ang nagsasalita pa lang is uh, mr panelo and it also senator bongo and you will notice karen that in the same manner that when mr lascanias and Mr. Matobato came out in 2016 and revealed what they know. And then uh, later became, uh, you know, nasa ICC sila. Nakuha sila ng ICC. Did we ever hear Mr. Duterte, former President Duterte, talk about it? Hmm. Or at least dispute it, disown it, deny it categorically? Now, why is it so difficult for him now? There's been, what, few days, two to three days now from that uh, bombshell testimony. And knowing him, he would easily react. Mm. So mm. those are just uh, the thoughts. thoughts. Okay, all right. Now, just very quickly, before we go to a quick break, moving back to Kerwin Espinosa, he um, naming Senator Bato de la Rosa under oath that he ordered him, coerced him to mention you. Do you intend to file a case against Senator Bato de la Rosa or are you gonna let the ICC? Are you leaving this to the ICC? I'm discussing that this afternoon with my lawyers. I'm inclined to file cases, uh, to okay. file cases against uh, Senator Bato. And here we are, there is a direct, uh, uh, there is a, uh, a witness who directly personally under oath implicated him when before there was none so so um we will be discussing that in the in the meeting this afternoon okay let's continue our discussion with former senator lila de lima who is now gunning for a house seat next year as a party list representative for mama mayang liberal or ml the sectoral arm of the liberal party so attorney de lima when you got out of detention, when you got out of detention, I asked you if you would run again, and you said no. You didn't want you didn't want to return yes. to politics. What made you change your mind? 
Okay, uh, medyo mahaba-habang story ang Karen, but uh, if I may just, you know, summarize everything. Yes, I did tell you and I did tell everyone else when I was first released from detention that I have no intentions of running for any position in next year's elections. I was just, you know, I, I was just doing my role as the LP spokesperson. I was just doing my role also now where LP, of course, is helping out Mama Mayang Liberal, ML, in, in its accreditation process because it was filed only last uh, December and then recently accredited nga ML party list last July. Now, but then I was I was going around already, Karen, uh, along with some LP uh, personalities and ML personalities. We are in a, we, we were holding some um, political forum with the, especially some uh, colleges and universities. Basically, I was sharing my story, my narrative, you know, what was done to me as a prisoner of conscience also, my whole experience inside the PNP uh, a custodial center, your day-to-day -day life. Go. And people, especially uh, youth, uh, uh, students were very interested about the, that, that one. But I told you, and all that. But in all of this, my engagements, people would also approach me. Are you running for Senate? We want you to run for Senate. Why don't you go back to the Senate? Uh, and so, but I would always say, hindi pa ko ata ako prepared, hindi pa ako handa. Alam nyo na, alos pitong taon din naman ako na, nawala sa, sa outside world. But uh, ano, some of my colleagues in the LP and in the ML were telling me, Lila, why don't you do that? Let, let's, let's, let, let's, because ML is the multi-sectoral party of, uh, party list of LP. Now, we, we, my, our whole uh, tack is that to how to bring closer to the people our advocacies. And that is definitely through these various sectors, marginalized sectors. Because it's not going to be You know, you, you, the, the, the sovereignty comes from the people, resides in the people. And these are marginalized sectors. These are sectors that need uh, strong voices, courageous voices. And they were also saying, in, uh, you know, in the, on the pragmatic side of things, that since it's a new political, uh, it's a new party list, just accredited last um, July, we yeah. we uh, we need to start strong. Yeah. So we need uh, strong personalities also, whose uh, advocacies are definitely at par with or uh, aligned with the aspirations and the realities affecting the marginalized sectors and. I uh, am known to be human rights advocate, advocates for democracy, and especially social justice also. Because in the uh, Senate, since I now ako as a Senate committee, a chairperson of the Senate Committee on Justice and Human Rights, I was not able to pursue the mga pet bills ko on human rights. There were quite a number of them. But I'm, I, I, I remain to be the uh, chairperson of the Committee on Social Justice, Welfare, and Rural Development. And if you will remember, I was the main author of the Four Peace Law and the yeah. Magna Carta of the Poor. Now, this uh, the marginalized sectors that we represent, yes, they have distinct attributes. They have distinct aspirations uh, affecting their respective sectors. But there is one value, that uh, core value that encompasses that binds all of the sectors, and that is social justice. Yeah. So, sabi ko, maganda yan na mas mapapalapit tayo sa mga sectors, especially so that LP, as part of its demonization, especially from the past administration, ay uh, itiniraan talaga. Eh, mga elitista yan, walang pakialam yan o mga walang alam yan. We want to prove to the people that our advocacies, our values, our principles as Liberal Party are very much attuned to their day-to-day -day life. We know na yung mga pangunahing ano ngayon, uh, aspirasyon ng mga tao ay tungkol sa mga sa sikmura, di ba? Because of uh, in high inflation, poverty, low wages. But ang ano naman namin is that, you know, kami, Liberal Party has always been standing for good governance and anti-corruption. Mm -hmm. Now, dapat maintindihan ng mga tao, and that's one reason why we're, we're doing this, a party list, para mas lalo kaming nakikiusap sa kanila, ay hindi may iwala yung good governance sa mga pang-araw-araw na problema yan. Kasi kung may good governance, 
mga anti-corruption advocates nandyan sa Kongreso, then mas madali na matugunan yung mga aspirasyon nila, yung mga problema nila. So that, that is, we just want to be closer to the sectors, to the communities. Okay. Now, saan kukunin ng mamamayang liberal ang boto ninyo? Alam natin that when it comes to party list groups, uh, for yes. the first uh, nominee to sit, maybe you need, we talked about it roughly, okay, some have said 250,000, let's put it to 250 to 400,000 votes. Some provinces, kasi they deliver. Some provinces yes. deliver for specific party lists. For example, Bicol, right? The party lists in Bicol, you have Bicol, the, pro, the, the region even, delivering. Saan po kukunin ng mamamayang liberal ang mga boto ninyo? Okay. Uh, right now, we are actually mapping out. The ML team, the campaign team, is mapping out those uh, areas, geographical oh. areas, and also the sectoral. Kasi dalawa yan, geographical and sectoral. Since we are, as I said, we are multi-sectoral, we're going to identify specific sectors so sa tingin namin, madadala kami. Ma, na, ma, ma, you know, we, we can expect that they will work for us, that they will work for our electoral victory. So, but I, I don't think we can expect all of those sectors because some other party lists are representing those other sectors. Now, sa geographical areas naman, that's part of our mapping, uh, we can look at the LP constituency as as yeah. uh, as uh, the a multi-sectoral arm of LP. We can we will depend on our local candidates, young LP, because so, we have our candidates now in the LP. And uh, needless to state, mm -hmm. you, you know they are expected also to carry ML being the sectoral arm of the LP. So we are in that process and we are looking forward na magkakausap-usap ng mga grupo. Because uh, you, we can always say that there's some competition there. Uh -huh. yeah. We are looking at the same, same, uh -huh. the, the same ocean of, of votes, of vote base. Yung mga lalo na yung mga kindred, yung Akbayan, yung, uh -huh. yung, uh, yung Magdalo and several other groups. So baka mag-agawan kami. So I think it's just a matter of campaign strategy the right campaign strategy. Sa ang, sa ang grupo, sa ang lugar, tututok this particular uh, P, uh, party list. So uh -huh. it can so always... Very quickly, you are yes. not anymore, you are no longer... Kasi in the beginning, you were speaking in behalf of the Liberal Party, remember? Yes. And I thought that you would somehow serve as the spokesperson or the campaign manager. Uh, you have some some personalities running for the Senate. Does that mean you are doing this full-time? Ito na, this is your concentration. ML. I'm focused on ML. I'm not oh. going to uh, to uh, serve anymore at, at the moment as LP, LP spokesperson, because I'm concentrated on ML, because I happen to be a, a lead nominee of the ML. We need to spread the word about ML. Di pa siya kilala? Yung ML kasi bago pa nga. So uh, we have to catch up in, in, in that regard as increasing awareness about ML, how 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 genuine a party list it is that's really representing uh, var various uh, sectors. We have not been put up by any political dynasty. There are no business financial interests behind us, but strictly sectoral. Okay, yes. I think on that note, the people watching right now, mahirap kumuha ng boto sa party list, ma'am, di ba? Alam natin yun, isa lang ang binoboto ng tao, hindi personalidad, kundi yung party list mismo. Yes. Hindi tutulad yes. ng senador na labing dalawa ang i-check nila, eto isa lang. Bakit dapat nila iboto ang mamamayang liberal where you are the first nominee? Okay, I'm not gonna say first that to, you know about vote vote because it's not yet campaign period. Ang appeal po namin ngayon, my appeal especially, is that no more about our party list, um, uh, about uh, ML party list. It stands for Mama Mayang Liberal, and I hope you would uh, we can see that uh, aside from it being a genuine uh, party list, and and you know yung ang, ang aming, um, by line so far is tapat sa Pilipino. You can see from the listing of the lead nominees, we are three, no the lead nominees are myself, 
former Congressman Ted Bagila and former Congressman Erin Taniada. You can see from our own track record, from, from our reputation also, that the people can expect stronger and courageous voices to represent them. Because when you sit either in, in either the Senate or in the House of Representatives, and even if you're supposed to be the official representative of a particular party list, attending to their needs, to their uh, to the, to to the you know what, what the pieces of legislation that can be that can be sponsored in their behalf you are actually you are actually also working for the national interest kasi sa kongreso nagsisimula karamihan ng batas so you would have stronger voice there more courageous voice not just to represent the sectors but also to engage in various discourses in yeah. congress all right. Well, good luck to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. We hope to have you back on Head Start as the campaign season brews up. Thank you so much, former Senator Laila De Lima. Thank you, ma'am. My absolute pleasure, Karen, always to be in your program. Thank you. All good right. day to everyone. God bless. All right. Thank you so much. Mag-ingat po kayo, ma'am.